Behind me, you can see different forms of energy at work. The wind energy turning the blades of the wind turbines that are used to generate electrical energy. The energy of the waves crashing into the rocks and eroding them away slowly into pebbles and sand. And the green grass absorbing the energy in sunlight and storing it as chemical energy in the sugar molecules of the cellulose and carbohydrates the plants make. How do we make sense of all these different forms of energy and transformations between them and so come to a better understanding of the essential features of energy itself? One thing we can do is relate the different forms of energy to the work they can do. As far as energy is concerned, work involves pushing or pulling objects to make them move. Or to put it differently, work involves applying a force to an object to make it move through a distance. Here I've got a kiwi fruit. I'm going to lift it from the floor to the table. Oh, I'm exerting a steady pulling force of about one newton as I lift the kiwi fruit and place it on the table. How do I know that? Well, I weighed the kiwi fruit, and its weight, which is just the downward force of gravity acting on it, turns out to be about one newton. To lift the kiwi fruit at a steady speed, I have to counteract that downwards force of gravity with an upwards force of about one newton. The distance from the floor to the table is about one meter. I've done positive work on the kiwi fruit equal to the force I applied to the kiwi fruit multiplied by the distance the kiwi fruit moved. That's one newton multiplied by one meter, which equals one joule. The joule is the standard international unit of work. When the force is in the same direction as the displacement of the object, the work is simply the force applied to an object times the distance it moves. What's any of this got to do with energy? Well, I had to expend energy to do that work. It takes energy to do work. So in a sense, energy can be thought of in terms of its capacity to do work. There's an historical reason why we think of energy in this way. Here I am playing on Lady Barclay, the first steam locomotive in New Zealand. Fuel in the form of wood or coal was burned in Lady Barclay's firebox, which heated liquid water into superheated steam in her boiler. This water vapour expanded, pushing the pistons that moved the rods that turned the wheels, providing the driving force to pull heavy objects along the railway tracks. So we have the energy stored in fuel being converted into heat energy and steam energy, and then into the mechanical energy of the moving parts of the locomotive, which could be used to do the work of pulling objects from one place to another. Let's go back to the kiwi fruit. The energy used to lift the kiwi fruit from the floor to the table doesn't disappear when the kiwi fruit reaches the tabletop. It has been converted into a kind of stored energy called gravitational potential energy. If you don't believe me, let's use this stored potential energy to do some work. If I tip the kiwi fruit just over the edge of the tabletop, the downwards force of gravity immediately takes over, pushing the kiwi fruit down to the floor. The force of gravity equal in this case to one newton, has pushed the kiwi fruit through a distance of one metre. So again, one joule of work has been done, or one joule of gravitational potential energy has been expended. When I talk about gravitational potential energy in this way, I'm not really talking about some mysterious energy hidden inside the kiwi fruit as it sits on the tabletop but simply the potential it has to be pushed down to the floor by the force of gravity. If we look at the kiwi fruit as it falls, we can see the gravitational potential energy being converted into kinetic energy, or the energy that objects in motion are said to have. This kinetic energy is energy, once again, because it has the capacity to do work. If the kiwi fruit fell onto a spring, it would push down on the spring, compressing it. 
In principle, we could convert all of its kinetic energy into potential or stored energy in the compressed spring. Then as the spring released that energy, it would do work on the kiwi fruit so that it acquired kinetic energy again, and so on. This is an example of the conservation of energy, which is an essential feature of energy in all its forms. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be converted into or transformed between different forms. Well, I'm going to eat this kiwi fruit now and convert the chemical energy stored in its sugars into energy for my muscles so I can lift more kiwi fruit. It's hard work, but someone's got to do it.